Hello YouTube, Robert Alvarez, the Psychic Witch, also known as Mr. Lighting in a Fan. And Boss the Kitten is out and about and walking around and not the focus of the video this time. I'm so sorry about that. Because <laughs> believe me, I love doing it too. Anyway, um, as some of you know, I'm also known as Mr. Lighting in a Fan, and now I feel the need to turn on the fan, so pardon me for a moment. Right now the time is approximately 5.41 p.m. Eastern Time. The date is Wednesday, December 23rd, 2020. The video title, the official title of this video is Wedding Day 30, Hexing and Cursing Part 2. As you can tell from Hexing and Cursing, from Wedding Day 29, Hexing and Cursing Part 1, I am very passionate about a lot of things. I'm very passionate about music, I'm very passionate about reading books, and I had forgotten just how passionate I am about magic and witchcraft. I think because I am now 50 years of age, soon to be 51, um, my tolerance for bullshit is virtually non-existent. And I truly believe it is utter, nonsensical, poppycock bullshit that people, such as, say, New Age witches, are enveloping criminals that cause great harm with white light. And that they're expecting them to change their ways because they're being enveloped in white light. That is clearly not happening, and it has not been happening for as long as New Age witches have been enveloping people with the white light, and especially the pedophiles and the serial killers and the rapists, because they're just continuing to do harm. So, clearly, I did not realize just how frustrated I had become because of this practice, and now I am fully aware just how frustrated I have become, because this practice is still practiced today. I am not going to say that you must hex and curse other people. Um, one of the things that I have always loved about magic and witchcraft is that it is not an organized religion. I do not believe that witchcraft, or the, the religion of witchcraft, is a disorganized religion either. I truly believe that in the years that modern witches have been practicing witchcraft, we have established guiding principles. Those guiding principles include, but are certainly not limited to, honoring the new moons and the full moons, honoring the witches' wheel of the year, the Sabbaths, honoring um, the old ones. Be paying attention to and going with the flow of seasonal changes. Practicing the, 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 the blessings and the gifts that every witch has when they're born, such as healing, weather witchery, herb craft, divination. I also believe that one is not required to join a coven or a grove to be magically powerful, or to be magically adept, or to be magically knowledgeable. Because in our lives, we sometimes meet people with whom we can experiment and explore. Um, I never had such friends, so I, I tend to be a little envious when I, when I meet people that had those friends in childhood, and I'm just like, I, I just wish I did, you know, and the fact of the matter is that my childhood was far from typical. It wasn't, it wasn't a bad childhood, but it was not the most pleasant, and um, so, so there are things that I still wish that I could experience, that I wish I had experienced. But that's, that's really another topic for another day, and probably not even necessarily an appropriate topic for a YouTube video, but I digress. Nonetheless, nevertheless, what I feel is that it is important that people use what is available to them to protect themselves and their own. <clears throat> I truly believe that every witch has the right and the responsibility to use their magic, to use their witchcraft, to protect themselves 
from anything or anyone that wishes to call, cause them and theirs harm. Sometimes that means hexing, sometimes that means cursing, sometimes that means binding. But the fact of the matter is that we have these abilities. We as witches have these abilities. We have these skills, we have these talents, we have access to these energies. And I feel that we have the right and the responsibility to live life well, to be happy and healthy, and to bring good cheer to others, to bring good tidings to others, to bring good blessings to others. I feel that that is a right for every person, but especially for every witch, and it is a responsibility. I have mentioned in other videos that I do not care for this tolerance crap. To me, tolerance is crap. I do not want to be tolerated. I want to be accepted or left alone. You have a problem with me being a witch? Okay, leave me alone. You have a problem with me being gay? Okay, leave me alone. You have a problem with me being Hispanic? Okay, leave me alone. If you have a problem with me, any part of me, whatever, fine, I have no issue with that. Just leave me alone. Or as I would say, leave me the fuck alone. Because if you have an issue with something about me, that's your issue with me. Your issue, not my issue. And I don't have an issue, I have no issue with somebody saying, you know what, I don't want to spend time with you because of X, Y, and Z. Okay. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. I don't think I've ever had a problem with that. My thing is, I truly believe that if somebody wants to harm me, if somebody wants to try and harm me, then I have the right and I have the responsibility to protect myself with anything that is available to me. Whether it is a gun, whether it is a knife, whether it is a spear, whether it is a bow and arrow, whether it is witchcraft and magic and witchcraft. That's my right and that's my responsibility. If somebody wants to harm somebody who is sacred to me or one of my animals or my home, then I have the right and the responsibility to protect my the people that are sacred to me, to protect my animals, to protect my home by any means necessary. And some of those means may not be very nice. Some of those means may not be very feel good, may not be in, uh, may not bring on warm and fuzzy feelings, but it will make sure that I live another day. It will make sure that my home continues to exist. It will make sure that those who are sacred to me and the animals whom I love and adore continue to live another day. And I have no problem doing whatever it takes. And I do whatever it takes and I use whatever is available to me with no malice, no hesitation, and no apologies. I am not going to apologize for the fact that people have come to me and said, Robert, I think somebody's harming me. I think there's somebody that's around me that's causing me to feel fear. I feel that I'm in danger. I don't have a problem with somebody saying, I need you to do something about that. And I do not have a problem with somebody approaching me about that. And I certainly do not have an issue charging a fee. I don't do it for everybody, and believe me, there are people that have approached me about doing a spell for them, whether it was a romance spell, whether it was a money spell, whether it was a, a hex or a curse, and I do what I've always done. I engage in meditation and prayer about the situation for three days. And after that three-day period, whatever Goddess says is whatever, God, it was, it was whatever goes. And if Goddess says yes, then it's yes. If Goddess says no, then it's no. And one time somebody even said to me, you know, somebody had approached me on when I used Facebook and said to me, I really want you to do a love spell for me. And I remember stating, I said, first and foremost, this is my policy. My policy is that I'm going to spend three days in meditation and prayer and I'm going to commune with the great goddess and I'm going to ask her, yay or nay. If she says yea, then I'll begin preparing myself as I was taught to prepare myself before engaging in ritual work and spellcraft for another. And then you pay me whatever the great goddess or whomever, or whomever in whom you believe says 
whatever this amount is. I don't know what this amount is, and I don't want to know what the amount is ahead of time. I don't. I don't feel comfortable knowing that amount. And fortunately for me, the people that have approached me about doing ritual work and spellcraft for them have honored that. They do not tell me in advance what the amount is. They just send it to me. Or if I'm meeting them in person, they give me an, an envelope in cash. And I don't know what's in that envelope until I get back home. But that's how it goes. And then, at the appointed time, I do the ritual. I let them know when I'm going to do the ritual. I let them know the basics. I don't need to tell them everything. I don't want to tell them everything. I remember one time when I was in a hospital last year, somebody was like, I need you to do this for me, it's an emergency. I'm like, I'm not even, I haven't even begun preparing for that. And if I'm going to do that, I need to prepare. And I said to her, at the earliest, I can begin preparing myself tonight, and I can begin doing this tomorrow night. Not right now, tonight, tomorrow night, but like last year, I want to say April 2019. I said to her, I still, I know what works best for me. The manner in which I was taught works best for me. And when I deviate from what I was taught and how I was trained, it does not produce the, the results that are necessary. It does not produce the desired results. So I'm not going to do it because it's going to be a violation. It's not going to do what it's intended to do. And I, and I honor that. And I said to her, I can begin doing this tomorrow night, but I must have tonight to prepare. She was not okay with it. And she told me in advance how much she was going to pay me. And I'm like, why'd you do that? I don't want to do that. No, no. I, I'm just like, no, no, no. And, and she, I actually had no other choice but to block her. The irony was that she was referred to me by another witch for something else. In fact, it was for, um, uh, it was for a, a consultation about something. And I don't remember what the thing was, but I was just like, no, 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 this is not working. And that she was not, and, and the irony not the irony. I found it strange that when I called her, she was texting me to say, I'm not available right now, I'm busy in a meeting. And then I said, that's fine, you can get back to me at your convenience. And then she kept texting me, and I'm like, wait a minute, I thought she was busy in a meeting. But she kept texting me, and it was like, all of a sudden the meeting didn't exist. I'm like, wait a minute, I thought you were busy in a meeting. That's, I didn't say that to her, I, I just thought that in my mind. But I could already see where this was going, and I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I blocked her. I blocked her via phone and via text. And she left me a message that night, or the following morning, whenever it was. I listened to the message, I immediately deleted it after I finished listening to it. And I have not heard from her since. And that makes me very happy. Um, that was just somebody that had a lot more issues than I could handle and that I could help with. And sometimes that happens. But I am crystal clear that the people that have come to me for ritual work and spellcraft have gotten what they needed. And one person in particular has come to me for hexes, and they have always worked well for her. And let me tell you something, I am so happy that the people that were causing her pain and hardship are no longer a part of her life. And one, the manner in which she disappeared um, and he was very threatening to her, her roommate, and their cats. So, and you know, when it comes to my cats, especially black cats, I'm like, mm -mm 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 -mm. don't try nothing stupid. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that it worked out very well. <sighs> but anyway, YouTube, thank you so much for honoring who I am and what I do. I am so happy and so proud of all of you who wedded along with me in November. Thank you again to, Ember, to the Ember Honey Ribbon, the Big Fat Witch, for coming up with the idea of wedding, W-E-D-I-N, witching every day in November. It was so much fun and so enjoyable and so exciting to do these 30 videos. And I am gonna keep my promise. I am gonna do a bonus video. It'll be the second bonus video and the last bonus video. Um, I haven't come up with a topic yet, but there's always tomorrow. Um, and, you know, I, I do, I do, I do invite people to comment on this topic because it is a very sensitive topic, but I feel that it is a very necessary topic. I think that there are certain mindsets, and I don't, I don't mean to imply that in a negative way, I really don't. There are certain beliefs 
regarding hexing and cursing that run the gamut from like, oh no, don't do that, to, well, you know, sometimes it's necessary and everything in between, and really everything in between. So I do welcome discourse on this topic, I really do. I feel that it is an important topic. I feel that it is one of those topics that's almost like swept under the rug, or swept under the cauldron, as the case may be, and I feel that it really needs to be discussed. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna harp over this. I mean, I'm not gonna say that, you know, we're gonna keep talking about this for the next, for the next year, like until the end of 2021. No, we're not gonna do that. But every once in a while, I have a video that I re that was recorded three years ago, and every once in a while, somebody comments on that video, and I'm like, oh, well, hello there. This could be the one, you never know. But I do thank you all for all the likes, for all the comments, for all the subscriptions, for all the, the shares. They mean a great deal to me. And of course, thank you to all of you who have been scheduling your sessions. And keep in mind, I have my trusty traditional medicinals throat coat, so I'm ready for your phone reading and your video reading. And for now, I wish all of you many peaceful and prosperous blessings, as well as blessings of protection and clarity and illumination. And stay tuned for the next video.